The island of Capri is famous as a resort island both now and in classical times, and the Emperor Tiberius famously built his villa there. Augustus had one on the island as well, and he apparently adorned this villa with the weapons of heroes and gigantic bones. There is an idea floating around that these were dinosaur bones, so what I want to do in this video is take a look at this idea and see if it holds up, and if it doesn't, then what these bones actually could have been. Unfortunately, however, the overall video is going to be on the shorter side because we only have one text describing this. Our source of information is a paragraph from the Twelve Caesars, written by Suetonius while serving as secretary to Emperor Hadrian. Suetonius records that Augustus apparently did not care for grandiose sumptuous palaces, actually burning one down that his granddaughter had built. Instead, he preferred his dwellings to be sparsely decorated and fairly moderate. But in the case of his villa on Capri, Suetonius tells us that Augustus filled it with ancient weapons and gigantic bones. The direct quote is as follows. His own villas, which were modest enough, he decorated not so much with handsome statues and pictures, as with terraces, groves, and objects noteworthy for their antiquity and rarity. For example, at Capri, the monstrous bones of huge sea monsters and wild beasts, called the bones of the giants and the weapons of heroes. So what are we to make of this? Well, we do know that collecting antiquities and things that were supposed to be legendary weapons and armor was something that was sometimes done in antiquity. That could very well be true. The bones were a little more difficult to figure out, however. The idea that these were dinosaur bones, if the bones were in fact real, is a fun one to play around with. It certainly would be interesting to think of a Roman emperor having private quarters with a T-Rex skull or something comparable just hanging out in the corner of the room. The problem with this description, however, is that the actual terms used have a specific meaning. And when we take some new archaeological work into account, these probably were not dinosaur bones, but what they may actually be is more interesting. The original Latin for this description is Ammonium Beluarum, monstrous beasts, and the term Belua was used as a descriptor for giant animals like elephants. It also was used to refer to sea monsters, which in this case generally meant whales. There are other Latin and Greek terms for sea monsters, but these tended to be specific creatures, whereas Belua tends to be a general descriptor for whales. At one point, it really wasn't certain if this room full of sea monster bones actually existed, or if Suetonius was just exaggerating or simply making something up. However, we have recent archaeological evidence that the Romans were hunting and butchering whales, which changes the picture. Roman sites from the Strait of Gibraltar, a major center of the ancient fishing industry, have turned up whale bones, especially from the Roman city of Belo Claudia, and the DNA testing informs us that these belonged to the North Atlantic right whale and the Atlantic gray whale. There is ongoing research into a previously unknown aspect of the Roman fishing industry, whaling, that strongly suggests that this activity took place at least along the Iberian and the Moroccan coastlines, both along the Atlantic and along the Mediterranean. There are over 200 different sites used in processing large fish, probably tuna, in this area, and it would not be out of the realm of possibility that the Romans were capturing whales that had come into the coastal areas as well, as the bones seem to attest. So, in this particular instance, so in this particular instance, Augustus probably did have his villa on Capri decorated with the bones of what, to the Romans, were sea monsters that they hunted and killed for food. Not dinosaur bones, then, but perhaps something equally as impressive.